Who really discovered America? And what's this mysterious map? This mysterious map that thousands of people haven't solved or understood how it was drawn. You'll be amazed at what you hear. If you haven't watched the previous episode, I suggest you watch that first. Before I start talking about the mysterious map, I'd like to give you some information about who drew it. Piri Reis was a Muslim researcher and naval commander. You have probably heard of him before. His full name was Ahmed Muhyiddin Piri. Piri Reis was born in Gliblu in modern-day Turkey. This city was the center of the Islamic fleet. From what Sheikh al-Islam of that era, who was Ibn Kamal, says, the people of Gliblu spent their lives seafaring. Their ships were their beds. The waves were their cribs. But what makes Piri Reis who he was, was the education he received from his uncle. His uncle, Kamal Reis, made significant contributions to Islamic history. It's enough for you to know that he taught the Barbaros brothers. But there's also this. History was made during a sea battle that Kamal Reis was the commander of. So much so that afterwards his strategy was used during all naval battles. In 1499, during the Sapienza naval battle, a first occurred. Muslims astonished the world with their intellect and did something unexpected. For the first time in naval history, rifles were used. After this, the rifle became the weapon of choice during naval battles. Piri Reis stood by his uncle during nearly all battles and learned everything from him. But he had a quality that set him apart from the other seamen, and this is generally what he's remembered for. Piri Reis was very skilled at drawing, and he used this skill in the service of Islam and his research, and that's why he became one of the most prominent map makers in history. After the death of his uncle, Piri Reis followed in his footsteps and waved the flag of Islam across the seas. Now, we can finally get to the topic of our video. The map that Piri Reis drew has been talked about a lot because it is a map of America. In fact, it is the oldest map of America. What we can conclude from this is that Piri Reis formally discovered America first. How? When you see the details on the map, I think you'll agree. Of course, others went before him. We proved this with solid evidence in the previous episode. But if you ask why Piri Reis was the first, it's because Piri Reis was the first to draw the most detailed map for both continents of America. That's why he deserves the title of the first discoverer of America. Piri Reis wrote in detail about his American voyage in his book, Kitab Ibehriya, and presented his book to Suleiman the Magnificent. But it's not just this, it's astonishing and hard to believe, but you can see that Piri Reis drew the Antarctic coast as well. What this means is that he also explored those areas. As we said in the previous episode, this map has astonished scientists and even NASA, but you can see why they would be astonished. How did he get to Antarctica in that era and with those resources? Isn't it strange? But if you look more closely at this map, you'll see dozens of interesting details. For example, you should watch the documentary that the History Channel made on this. In 1929, a historian discovered a map drawn on deerskin. It was determined that this map belonged to Piri Reis, a Turkish admiral that lived in the 16th century. When they compared this map to other maps from that era, they saw that this map included lands that had yet not been explored. The Antarctic coast was drawn without the present-day ice cover. What's surprising is the Antarctic border was drawn without ice. It was drawn as it was millions of years ago, and European and North African coasts. But the detailed drawing of Antarctica has shocked even those who support the existence of aliens because these areas were discovered 300 years after they were drawn. If we remember that Antarctica is covered in ice a mile thick, and if we remember that it wasn't until 1958 that a machine that measured the Earth's crust existed, interestingly, a map drawn in 1531 correctly depicted the coastal borders under the ice. When topographers compared modern-day maps with Piri Reis's map, they found that they were similar down to the finest of details. How can someone who lived in that era make such detailed drawings of newly discovered mountains and rivers? I don't know of anyone in 1531 who could fly up to the necessary elevation to draw this detailed map. How did they see the land under the ice? We know they didn't go and explore Antarctica, but they were able to somehow draw a map this detailed. The fact that the rivers and mountains were drawn in such detail is proof that this area was discovered long before the Spanish discovered it. And like we said before, upon seeing this map of Antarctica, scientists even considered the possibility of the existence of aliens. 
And even today, some foreign cults use this map as proof of the existence of aliens because to create a detailed map like this, one would need dozens if not hundreds of years. So how then did Piri Reis draw this map? Or is there something that historians and scientists don't know or are concealing? If we keep in mind the evidence we shared in the previous episode, we can explain the possibility of how Piri Reis was able to draw such a map in such a short period of time. The people who migrated to and lived in America, it makes more sense to think that those people helped him draw such an accurate and detailed map. What we can take away from him having drawn Antarctica so accurately is that others had explored those areas previously and transferred this knowledge to Piri Reis. Why can't hundreds of scientists and historians accept this? And why isn't this depicted accurately in history books? Maybe they just don't want to admit that Muslims discovered America. In this video, we talked about a hero who carried out research in the name of Islam and the world, Piri Reis. He was a committed Muslim hero who carried out research and continued as naval commander in the Ottoman fleet until the end of his days. This commander reached the end of his days at age 90 and completed his mission. Let these videos of prominent heroes be a gift to the enemies of the faith who tried to create the illusion that Muslims are behind in science, philosophy, and other areas of life. If you want more videos like this, please like and comment with your thoughts. May Allah be with you.